the gun-toting, herb-smoking, model-throwing, Dan Bilzerian is getting loads of flack online at the moment. Now, don't worry about his personal safety. He's probably wearing a flak jacket made up of his dad's trust fund money. So why am I even making this video? Well, my name's Cairo, and I'm doing a $1 million hustle challenge. That's trying to get my net worth to over a million dollars within the next three years. So I've been looking for a lot of inspiration online from the likes of Gary Vee, from Russell Brunson, from Tony Robbins. And amidst that, I stumbled upon the Dan Bilzerian saga that is playing out all over YouTube and in the press at the moment. Now, despite not being a follower of Dan's, I have definitely seen his Instagram posts before and have seen that iconic beard all over the show. Now, there's a lot of negativity surrounding this whole thing, so I want to take a step back, give my own take on it, and see if there were any positive life lessons or business lessons to be learned from this whole drama. Disclaimer, some of these life lessons might be in the what not to do category though. By the way, this video is all my own personal opinion, my own thoughts, trying to pick some positive things out of this whole mess. And it is possible that Danny isn't responsible for the turmoil that his company Ignite is in at the moment, but I'll let you be the judge of that, so let me know down in the comments what you think of all the goings on. Lesson number one, attention. Now like him or loathe him, you cannot argue that Dan is a master of grabbing people's attention. And as a social media marketer myself, doing it for brands and companies, I can attest that Dan's IG game is on point. 32 million plus followers, yet still he managed to niche down. True, his target audience might be 16 year old boys awed by the models the guns and the stacks of cash, yet he's still managing to get them to like, comment, and engage with his posts. So the analytics nerd in me wanted to compare some of his stats to some other influencers. So if we look at Social Blade, we can see that his engagement rate is still 6.56%, and that is very high for someone with millions and millions of followers. If you look at the likes of Kim Kardashian or those other super influencers, it's quite common for their engagement rate to be less than 2%. Now let's compare Dan's engagement ratio to someone who's the polar opposite of him, and that being Will Smith. Now if we look at Will Smith's stats, he has an engagement ratio of 2.89%, which is well under Dan's ratio. So Dan must be doing something right. You've gotta give it to him. He can keep his audience's attention. Now with such a massive following and high engagement rate, Dan Bilzerian would be able to make millions every year from selling products, doing brand deals, doing affiliate links, but would that be enough to support his lavish, insane lifestyle? I don't know. Lesson number two, be consistent. Now, did you ever doubt that something fishy was going on with Dan Bilzerian? I mean, he's been acting the same way for his entire internet fame career so far. Dan's public persona has been super consistent from day one. He has been sticking to the script, especially with the white v-necks and short shorts. Oh, and blowing things up, he, he likes that too. Now lesson one and lesson number two might be why he decided to go public with his company Ignite, because he was able to give investors the false confidence that he could leverage that attention and that engagement into sales. Now the life lesson that I'm taking away from this is that by having a clear message, even if it is as dubious as Dan's, is super important in growing your personal brand. It would be hard to argue that Dan has not grown a huge personal brand with his audience. Lesson number three, and that is to trust your instincts. I learned this the hard way when I got into business with my ex-business partner. My instinct was saying that he was not to be trusted, but I let my rational mind overrule my gut feeling. This ended up causing me loads of stress, lost me a lot of money. So let me know down in the comments if you'd like me to make a video more about that in the future. For anyone who has invested in Dan, I wonder if they did have a feeling of unease in their belly when first deciding to work with him. I wonder if they regret not listening more closely to their instincts. If I'm gonna succeed on my $1 million hustle challenge, I'll need to make sure I balance my decision making between my head and my heart, whether that's who to work with or which companies to invest in. Lesson number four, and that's earning it is better than buying it. Is it just me? But I'd feel really icky if my fame was based on having to pay lots of models to be around me. Kind of reminds me of that stereotype of the old millionaire who's on his yacht and he's like hiring strippers and exotic dancers and models to be on the boat and there's this creepy old guy. 
But it's even weirder with Dan because he's relatively young, he's relatively good looking, he's got a fairly good physique, and he's still paying all these women to be around him. That creeps me out. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I think there'd be far more gratification in earning something rather than buying it. Now, I can't comment on Dan's inner thoughts, but I would guess that it could get pretty depressing knowing that everyone around you is either being paid directly or indirectly, and that's the only reason that they are there. And that might extend from the models to his friends. Would his friends still be there if he wasn't doing these outlandish and outrageous things and throwing money around? I don't know. And that might be a scary thought for Dan, so I kind of feel feel bad for him a little bit. <laughs> but not that bad. Dan has allegedly gotten millions of dollars from his father, Paul Bilzerian, who was convicted on felony charges and to date has only paid back $3.7 million of the $62 million that he owes to the SEC, according to the Wall Street Journal. Now, I think there's a parenting lesson in there somewhere that I probably will be teaching my future kids. Lesson number five, and that is to avoid heart attacks. <laughs> Ouch. Dan supposedly had two heart attacks around the age of 25. This was fondly recounted by Dan in several interviews, as if his regimen of partying and mixing alcohol, drugs, sleepless nights, Viagra, was a smart thing to do. If you're watching this and you're unsure of my tone, don't do a damn. Heart attacks, not fun. Lesson number six, and that is to take the fame and money away. Now, the best way to affect Dan's future would be to go after the money. However, Dan has allegedly got his dad, Paul, in his corner to scurry away those finances, so this might not be an option. Remember, Paul Bilzerian, Dan's dad, is a convicted felon and has only paid back 5% of the $62 million he owes to the SEC. So it is possible that more money will go missing. Okay, so the lawsuits that Dan is facing, that Ignite is facing, might not dent Dan's fortune too much. So what would affect him? It seems like Dan would struggle to replace the light bulb should the spotlight that is shining on him at the moment go out. But even if Ignite tanks, and even if Dan loses millions of followers, and if brands refuse to work with him, and if models don't want to be around him, I still have a sinking feeling that he'll be able to leverage his core audience of teenage boys to make millions of dollars a year. So how do we get his core audience of teenage boys to stop thinking that Dan is cool? Well, that's the tricky bit. I'm not sure. If you have any ideas, let me know down in the comments. And that takes us to the biggest takeaway that I think businesses and personal brands should take to heart. That is to find your niche and give them what they want. Did you find this take interesting? If so, crush the like button and subscribe to join me on my $1 million hustle challenge. Watch these videos next. Let's hustle together and I'll see you in the next one.